how do you know if you should wholesale, flip, or hold a property? This is not going to have a direct answer because it really depends. But what I want to do is give you some framework in determining how you can know what may be the best situation for you. So the first thing that I look at is I look at the property. Okay. Um, what is the best thing for the property? So um, the best thing for the property, there might be lots of margin lots of money to be had in the property. Cause remember, if you're going to do a wholesale, you want to make some money, but then the end buyer also has to make some money either through doing a flip or through doing a rental. So they're going to need to get some cash flow, which is one of the reasons we look at the property. Okay. So one of the questions we're going to ask ourselves is what is the ARV on this property? What is the purchase price? How much is the rehab on this property? And what do we think that the rental amount will be? Now we can look at the rents, the rental income that's coming in, and we can get that annualized and get an idea of how much cash flow somebody could be getting on this property. And that could help us determine how much that person could pay for the property. All, or what we can do is look at the ARV. We can put a profit margin in for a fix and flipper and know we're going to have to be less than that in selling it to them so that they can make some money. So for example, let's just say that the property is a hundred thousand dollars on an ARV, just to keep numbers really simple. Um, and let's say that the rehab cost is going to be around $20,000. And let's say your fees and costs and everything else are going to be $10,000 for, um, for loan fees and some interest or whatever the case is. Let's just keep it simple. So that's $70,000. So if I'm going to wholesale this deal to somebody, they're going to need to have to buy that property at $70,000 from me. And they're not even making a profit quite yet. Okay. So then I'm like, okay, well, they've got to make some type of a profit. Great. They need to make $10,000. So now their purchase price is 60,000. So I'm going to have to buy that property for less than 60,000. And then we're using very rough math here just so we can be on the same page. So I maybe need to buy that property for 55,000 in order for me to wholesale it. Now, if there isn't enough margin for, this person to resell the property, then it's not going to make a good wholesale deal. It might make a great flip for you. And the other thing you've got to be thinking about here is when we are dealing with a rental situation with a landlord, what they're looking for is a return on investment. So they're going to say, how much is the rent minus the expenses? That is going to equal the income. Now, whether they have a loan or not, we don't worry about that um, because we want to compare the property on a we want to compare the property on a gross income because my loan might be cheaper than your loan or your loan might be cheaper than mine or more expensive or you might put a bunch of money down and I might not put a bunch of money down. And so the great equalizer is just to say, let's pretend like this property doesn't have a loan on it. And what is that cash flow without having any type of a loan. And then whether you choose to finance it or don't choose to financing is really up to you. But we know that the rate of return on this property is good enough. So someone would be interested. So let's give you an example on that as well. Okay. So let's just say rents in the area are $2,000. You're just picking a, a random number here. So let's say property tax is $200 a month. Let's say the insurance is a hundred dollars a month. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have some, um, maintenance and some of those types of things that are going to need to happen. I usually say, Hey, let's plan on some maintenance, some vacancy and some capital improvements, maintenance, vacancy, capital improvements, you know, so we're going to say a hundred bucks for each of those. Okay. So then we're basically saying, great, 200, one, two, three, four. So that's 600. So $1,400. I'm going to times that by 12. So this is my, my gross income times that by 12 is going to give me here. We'll do this 1400, which is the rent minus those expenses times 12 is going to give you 1680. Then what you're going to do is divide that by what you're buying the property for. So if I'm buying the property for 
130,000 and I'm putting $30,000 into repairs. So my all in price of the property is 660,000. What I do is divide that by 160, which means I'm getting a 10.5% rate of return on this investment. That is fantastic. So the higher this rate of return is, the more chance I'm gonna have somebody that's gonna to wanna to buy that property from me. Now you're gonna say, well, Ryan, I gotta get a loan on the property. Sure, but you take the debt service out so that you can compare apples to apples because I may have this property does it and I may have another property where I get a lot more money. Let's say there's a property when it's all said and done, I get $1,600 and I'm only into it $100,000. Well, that's obviously gonna be a better investment for me because 1,600 times 12 divided by 100 divided by 100 is gonna put a 19.2% return, which is better than a 10.5% return. So what it is, is we take financing out and then you say, okay, well, let's say I have to get this finance. What is it gonna cost me? Okay, I'm gonna be 160 interest rate. Am I putting money down? Am I not putting down? Those are all individual circumstances. And then you may say, okay, well, my payment's gonna be $1,000. So I'm gonna make $400 a month. So your net cash flow is gonna be less, but when I'm comparing a property to property, I take the debt service out of the equation so I can compare apples to apples, and then I add it back in to get my individual circumstances as to how much I'll be making on cash flow on that property. So that's one of the things that I've gotta do is kind of reverse engineer that for somebody that may be buying and say, what's the most that they can pay? Well, I can tell you, Anything over, say, a 5% return, you're going to get some pretty serious interest in. 8%, you're going to get really great interest. But I would say most rental properties are going to have somewhere around a 5% return, maybe 4 maybe 6 um, somewhere around that 5% return. But remember, the person that's buying that rental property isn't just buying it for the cash flow. They're buying it for the appreciation. They're buying it for the tax write-off. They're buying it for the amortization, so the debt's being paid down by somebody else. So there's a lot of other factors that go into this for them. But if you can get somewhere around that 5% plus or minus return, then that's something. So let's say that you're going to be able to buy the property for 100,000 and that this gives them a 10% return. Well, there might be a $30,000 profit margin there for you. But let's say that you're buying the property for $135,000. It may not work out. So those are all different calculations that you've got to look at and saying what's going to be the best thing. So we've talked a little bit about wholesaling that property. To wholesale that property, the end buyer has to make a profit either through selling it and making a profit or through renting it and making a profit, which is going to determine the max amount that you could sell that property for, making sure that they can actually make a profit. The other thing we talked about is if you should keep it as a rental property on your own. And we look at these calculations. One of the other things that comes in is your personal circumstances. Are you able to get a 30-year loan? Are you able to credit qualify for that? Do you have some money down? If you don't have those things, then you probably need to look at wholesaling or look at doing the fix and flip yourself. And then the next thing is just doing the fix and flip yourself. How do you know if that's the case? Um, I think it also depends on profit margin. Some people will say, you know what, if it's not a lot of profit, I'd rather take that and wholesale it. But if it's a really big profit, then I'd rather fix and flip it myself. Other people have the psychology, if it's a really big profit, I'd rather take as much as I can and not deal with the work and get more, but not as much as I get fix and flip. And that really comes down to individual decisions based upon your personal circumstances, your risk tolerance, and what your personal goals are.